Have you ever been on a pilgrimage? Strangely, I have. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was uh, about 10 years ago when I, uh, when I was in Spain, when I worked in Spain. And uh, after my work, I decided to spend another month in Spain and uh, went to uh, the north of Spain and started walking on, uh, on quite a famous uh, walk called uh, the Camino, the El Camino. And um, it was a great experience. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, full of people yet because it was in the spring time. So the weather was great and there were fewer people than in summer. Uh, and, I, and I made some friends. Um, uh, um, I met a German girl and a Spanish uh, boy. And most of the time we walked together and then we talked a little bit, had lunch together and in the evenings we arrived at the same um, shelter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same house what where were we stayed these then, yeah. shelters like? Can you they were very. They, they were different kinds okay. of places, different kinds of accommodation. Uh, some of them were like youth hostels. Mm -hmm. Some of them were very small um, and run by families. Some of them were run by churches, mm -hmm. well, usually um, Catholic, the Catholic Church. And some were run by the villages, so the municipality okay. from the village of the council. Did they provide any food or...? They're a very good question. They were very, very cheap. So all the accommodation um, cost between 5 to 10 euros. Okay. That's the cheapest possible way to, to stay anywhere. But of course, you could have a shower, you had a bed, usually... Um, at least five other people. You had to share the room with at least five other people, sometimes with uh, 80 or 90. All right. That was uh, quite crowded. And food, there were two possibilities. You could uh, either cook, okay, there were, okay. there were shops, of course, and there was a big common kitchen where you could cook, or you could, um, you could eat in... Um, in one of the restaurants that offered a so-called pilgrim menu. All right. It's a bit like a tourist menu. It's okay. a set menu. Yeah. Let's cheap. say rather cheap. It's about eight or nine or ten euros maximum, but you have you have a lot of um, it, it's it's a huge portion. Okay. And um, and then you could eat there if you if you wanted to. Yes. So what did you do? Both. Both. Sometimes we cooked. We also met other people from all around the world. Most of them were quite nice and friendly. And, uh, and um, a few times we made um, something typical of our countries. Although I made um, crepes, uh, pancakes, which are eaten in a lot of <laughs> other countries, but... Um, it was special. Yeah. It was special. Hungary was special. I, I, I didn't have the ingredients for goulash soup, for example, <laughs> a paprika chicken. Yeah. It's. I didn't want to make it too complicated. Yeah. Right. And everyone had, Everyone made something typical, yeah. like like gazpacho, or the Italians made some kind of an interesting pasta sauce. Um, so we had a, a great uh, local and international um, experience. I, I really so enjoyed it. So all in all, it it was it was a fantastic. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say holiday, but I would say <laughs> adventure because okay. it wasn't relaxing, okay. of course. Yes, because you had to walk quite a lot, at least uh, thirty between thirty and forty-five kilometers per day. Per day. Yes, and and. Uh, and you could you could never sleep uh, long enough, or you could never sleep at all because there were a lot of lot of people. Yeah. And everybody has different habits, and some people um, start packing at three thirty in the morning, right. and, and some people talk until after midnight. So there were a lot of um, disturbing moments, right? So you couldn't really sleep. While 
uh, you had to walk a lot, at least eight, nine, sometimes ten hours a day. Okay. So it was quite tiring. But especially looking back after so many years, it, it's, um, it, was, it was a great uh, adventure and uh, a lot of Would fun. Would you do it again? Yes, perhaps I would. Um, I actually, um, I thought of doing it um, already a couple of times, but I have a friend who is um, an expert Camino walker, okay. and uh, he has been probably to seven or eight different uh Locations. Not just yeah. locations, but there, there are there are about ten different um, walkways, paths, or, or routes that you can walk, and he's been to seven or eight of them already. Sometimes it starts from Sevilla. Okay. Sometimes it's the same place, but same, different paths. Exactly. So the, the the destination is always the same. Okay. Santiago, which is in the north. E, uh, west, northwest of Spain, in uh, in the province called Galicia. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can start from a lot of lot of different places, and they are all different. So I would, I would love to do um, one or two, or maybe all of the other um, roads. Okay, it would be fantastic, and I also know uh, a lot about these uh, routes from him. All right. Yeah. So, somebody wants a non-touristic uh, uh, vacation, <laughs> that is worth doing. Yeah. However, of course, you you meet people. people there, yeah. So, there so are, you're not alone. You are not alone. <laughs> there will be other <laughs> um, tourists, <laughs> exactly. But um, it's a very um, original or authentic kind of uh, holiday. And you don't have to be, um, I mean, you're a pilgrim, but but you don't necessarily have to be a very serious or very religious pilgrim. It doesn't matter. So all kinds of people go. Okay. It's good to know. Yeah. But originally, in the Middle Ages, of course, it, it was, was for... A religious act. It was a religious act, of course, and it was, it was a, um, a walk of a lifetime. All right. Of course, there were no... Hostel every every <laughs> no food and no food <laughs> no every, shops and no sh no hot showers after a day of yeah. walk and winter uh, harsh conditions bandits on the way and people would we also learned a lot about the history of of this um, uh, path this Camino and people would um, travel with animals so it, it, it looked like entire villages that were mm. on the go they needed to carry of the course. food <laughs> exactly so they and there was no refrigeration you couldn't go to the supermarket <laughs> 500 years ago obviously so they had sheep and pigs i think these two because they can walk a lot not really cows because that was problematic they couldn't have walked okay horses rich richer people had horses or or donkeys or mules anyway so it was it was very 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 different and then if somebody uh, became ill they stayed at the um, at one of the monasteries All right. one of the little hospitals run by churches and they either continued or they just stayed there <laughs> forever <laughs> so Yes, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. Sounds lovely. I can only recommend it, yeah. Okay. Have you ever been on a pilgrimage? Strangely, I have. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was uh, about 10 years ago when I, uh, when I was in Spain, when I worked in Spain. And uh, after my work, I decided to spend another month in Spain and uh, went to uh, the north of Spain and started walking on, uh, on quite a famous uh, walk called uh, the Camino, the El Camino. And um, 
it was a great experience. It wasn't it wasn't uh, full of people yet because it was in the spring time, so the weather was great, and there were fewer people than in summer. Uh, and I and I made some friends. Um, uh, um, I met a German girl and a Spanish uh, boy, and most of the time we walked together and uh, we talked a little bit, had lunch together, and in the evenings we arrived at the same um, shelter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same what house where we stayed. What were these yeah. shelters like? They were very. They were different kinds okay. of places, different kinds of accommodation. Uh, some of them were like youth hostels. Mm-hmm. Some of them were very small um, and run by families. Some of them were run by churches, mm-hmm. well, usually um, Catholic, the Catholic Church. And some were run by the villages, so the municipality. Okay. From the council. Did they provide any food or? That's a very good question. They were very, very cheap. So all the accommodation um, cost between five to ten euros. Okay. That's the cheapest possible way to, to stay anywhere. But of course, you could have a shower, you had a bed. Usually, um, at least five other people. You had to share the room with at least five other people, sometimes with uh, 80 or 90. Oh, right. That was uh, quite crowded. And food, there were two possibilities. You could uh, either cook, okay, there were, okay. there were shops, of course, and there was a big common kitchen where you could cook, or you could, um, you could eat in, um, in one of the restaurants that offered a so-called pilgrim menu. All right. It's a bit like a tourist menu. It's okay. a set menu. Yeah. Let's cheap. say rather cheap. It's about eight or nine or ten euros maximum. But you have you have a lot of um, it, it's it's a huge portion. Okay. And um, and then you could eat there if you if you wanted to. Yes. So what did you do? Both. Both. Sometimes we cooked. We also met other people from all around the world. Most of them were quite nice and friendly, and uh, and um, a few times we made um, something typical of our countries. Although I made um, crepes, um, pancakes, which are eaten in a lot of <laughs> other countries, but um, it was special. It was yeah, special. Yeah. It was special. Hungary was special. I, I I didn't have the ingredients for goulash soup, for example, <laughs> a paprika chicken. Yeah. It's I didn't want to make it too complicated, yeah. right? And everyone had, everyone made something typical, yeah. like like gazpacho, or the Italians made some kind of an interesting pasta sauce. Um, so we had a, a great uh, local and international um, experience. I, I really so enjoyed all it. So all it it was it was a fantastic uh, uh, well I wouldn't say holiday but I would say adventure because <laughs> okay. it wasn't relaxing okay. of course yes because you had to walk quite a lot at least uh, thirty between thirty and forty five kilometers per day per day yes and and um, and you could you could never sleep uh, long enough or you could never sleep at all because there were a lot of lot of people yeah. and everybody has different habits and some people um, start packing at 3 30 in the morning right. and, and some people talk until after midnight so there were a lot of um, disturbing moments right so you couldn't really sleep while uh, you had to walk a lot, at least eight, nine, sometimes ten hours a day. Okay. So it was quite tiring. But especially looking back after so many years, it, it's, um, it, was, it was a great uh, adventure and uh, a lot would of fun. Would you do it again? Yes, perhaps I would. Um, I actually, um, I thought of doing it um, already a couple of times. But I have a friend who is um, an expert, a 
Camino Walker, okay. and uh, he has been probably to seven or eight different uh, locations. Not just yeah. locations, but there, there are there are about ten different um, walkways, paths, or, or routes that you can walk, and he has been to seven or eight of them already. Sometimes it starts from Sevilla. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's the same place, but same, different paths. Exactly. So the, the the destination is always the same. Okay. Santiago, which is in the north e, uh, west northwest of Spain, in uh, in the province called Galicia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can start from a lot of lot of different places, and they are all different. So I would. I would love to do um, one or two or maybe all of the other um, roads. Okay. It would be fantastic. And I also know uh, a lot about these uh, routes from him. All right. Yeah. So Interesting. somebody wants a non-touristic uh, uh, vacation, <laughs> then it's worth doing. Yeah. However, of course, you, you meet people. People, there, yeah. So. There so are, you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> there will be other <laughs> it's um, a hard part. <laughs> tourists, exactly. But um, it's a very um, original or authentic kind of uh, holiday. And you don't have to be... Um, I mean, you're a pilgrim, but, but you don't mm-hmm. necessarily have to be a very serious or very religious pilgrim. It doesn't matter. So all kinds of people go. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, but originally in the Middle Ages, of course, it, it was, was a for religious. It act. was a religious act, of course, and it was it was a, um, a walk of a lifetime. Oh, right. Of course, there were no hostels. Was... Every every <laughs> no four food. and no food. <laughs> no every, shops and no sh- no hot showers after a day of yeah. walk in the winter. Uh, harsh conditions, bandits on the way, and people would. We also learned a lot about the history of of this um, uh, path, this Camino, and people would um, travel with animals. So it, it, it looked like entire villages that were on the go. They needed to carry of the course, food. <laughs> exactly. So they, and, and there was no refrigeration. You couldn't go to the supermarket <laughs> five hundred years ago, obviously. So they had sheep and pigs. I think these two, because they can walk a lot, not really cows, because that was problematic. They couldn't have walked. Okay, horses, rich, richer people had horses or, or donkeys or mules. Anyway, so it was, it was very, very, very different. And then if somebody uh, became ill, they stayed at the... Um, at one of the monasteries, All right. one of the little hospitals run by churches, and they either continued or they just stayed there <laughs> forever. <laughs> so, yes, it's uh, it's a wonderful experience. Sounds lovely. I can only recommend it. Yeah. Okay.